All right, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to continue exploring the idea of convergence for an infinite series. So there's a specific type of infinite series that we see come up a lot in math and in the real world, and it's called a geometric series. In this video, I'm just going to go through one example of a geometric series, and in my next video, I will talk more specifically about what a geometric series is generally. So let's consider the series 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 sixteenth plus 1 thirty second, etc, etc. So this is an infinite series. We want to find a general formula for this series and determine if the series converges or diverges. So let's start by finding a general formula. I'm noticing that the numerators stay the same, they're always 1, and the denominators are powers of 2. So I have 2, 4 is 2 squared, 8 is 2 cubed, 16 is 2 to the 4th, and 32 is 2 to the 5th. Then to make this even simpler, I'm going to write the exponent on the outside of each fraction because 1 to any power is just 1. So this is really 1 half to the first power, 1 half to the second power, 1 half to the third power, 1 half to the fourth power, and 1 half to the fifth power, etc. with all of those things being added together. So I can write this as a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 half to the n. So n equals 1 would give us the 1 half, n equals 2 would give us 1 fourth, n equals 3 would give us 1 eighth, etc. And the sum tells us that we're adding them all together. All right, so now let's determine if the series converges or diverges. The way we determine if a series converges is by looking at the partial sums. Basically, we're trying to tell if I've added up an infinite amount of these terms, am I going to be approaching some value? And to do that, since infinity is more of a concept than a number, we're going to look at the partial sums. We're going to look at the sum of the first n terms. So we can do this formally, but I want to walk through a more casual argument or a thought process first, because I think it's interesting to think about why this either converges or diverges more conceptually rather than just get lost in the math. So I have this one by one square, and I'm going to slowly shade it in by doing one term at a time of the series or of the sum. So the first term is one half, so I'm going to shade in a half of this square. Then I'm adding one fourth, so that's one fourth of the square, which is a half of the remaining space. Then I add one eighth, that's one eighth of the square, which is just half of the remaining space, since the remaining space is one fourth then 1 16th, and so on. So we can imagine as we continue to shade in portions, the portions that we're shading in are smaller and smaller, but they're always going to fit in this empty space. And if we do an infinite number of these shadings, we're going to fill up basically the entire square. And so my guess is that this series converges to one, meaning that when we add up an infinite number of terms of the form one over two to the n, we're getting one. I think it's pretty cool that we can do this geometrically, and it helps me remember that it's a geometric series. So whenever I hear geometric series, I think of this image of the square being filled in. But of course, we want to check this more formally by looking at the partial sums. So the first partial sum is 1 half. The second partial sum is 1 half plus 1 fourth. That's 3 fourths. Then the third partial sum is 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth. That's 7 eighths if we get common denominators. And then the fourth partial sum is going to be 15 over 16. We could continue this on and on and on, but I'm noticing a pattern here that I can use to write out the nth partial sum. So for each of these partial sums, I have two to the n in the denominator, where n is the number of the partial sum we're on, and then the numerator is just one less than the denominator. So I'm going to write that the nth partial sum is equal to 2 to the n minus 1 all over 2 to the n to represent this relationship. Now I want to compute the limit as n approaches infinity of these partial sums because I want to know if they eventually converge or settle to a specific value. So I'm taking the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n now, this is an indeterminate form, so I could use L'Hopital's rule, but I'm actually just going to simplify it because I think it's a little more straightforward. So I'm going to split this up into two fractions, 2 to the n over 2 to the n, minus 1 over 2 to the n. Then simplifying, I'm looking at the limit of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n, 
and that one over two to the n is going to zero as n approaches infinity. So we're dividing by larger and larger values, meaning that fraction is going to zero. So really, once I evaluate the limit, I just have one minus zero, which is one. And this confirms that the sequence of partial sums converges to one. So when we know that the sequence of partial sums converges, this tells us that the infinite series converges. Basically, we've taken the limit as n approaches infinity, and we see that those partial sums, where we're summing up n terms, goes to 1. And so this lets us know that if we were to sum up infinite terms, which is more than n, we would also be going to 1. This means that the sum is equal to 1, and we can conclude that the infinite series is convergent. All right, so that is it for this example of a geometric series. Hopefully it gives you a little experience talking about convergence with a series and how it relates to the partial sums. We'll talk more about geometric series in future videos, specifically talking about how they converge in general and going into some more examples. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.